If you're an aspiring videographer, chances are you've probably already used a gimbal before for times when stability and range of motion are critical to nailing the shot. And if you're after the most flexibility with gimbal control, yet don't want to break the bank, then this could be the solution, the Moser Aircross 3. The Moser Aircross 3 is a convertible 3-axis gimbal designed specifically for professional video makers using mirrorless and DSLR cameras. Supporting a 3.2 kilo max payload, it can accommodate a wide range of camera bodies, yet its unique design allows quick transformation adapted for multiple shooting positions. Completing this nice travel and storage case, as the name suggests, this is the third iteration of the Aircross gimbal and comes with various improvements and developments over its predecessor. With a professional looking matte black finish, the unit carries a high quality look and feel thanks to the primarily metal construction. Yet saying that, that metal construction does mean the unit weighs 1.3 kilos alone. So with the payload attached, you're looking at a rather hefty device. It certainly feels like it's built to last though. There's a lot of versatility packed into this thing, so it does look a little complex at initial glance, but everything is logically placed. The thick rubberized hand grip feels nice and sturdy, certainly giving plenty to grab onto while remaining rather comfortable to hold. At the very bottom are two standard quarter inch 20 metal threads, which can be used to attach accessories, primarily the tripod that's included within the package. A rather nice grippy tripod at that, providing added length for two-handed operation, which is certainly welcome with a hefty unit such as this. The second thread seems redundant at this stage, but will come into play as we explore the device further in just a moment. Further up though, we have the unit's main controls, ergonomically placed by the operator's thumb, and just beneath a built-in display, consisting of a multi-directional thumbstick used for making gimbal adjustments and menu navigation, a camera control button used when the camera is paired to the unit's built-in Bluetooth connectivity, and a function button for cycling between gimbal modes. Accompanying these on the side is a power button, which is also used for adjusting gimbal speed as well as placing the unit into sleep mode, and around the front, a trigger button, used to lock and unlock different axes, as well as swing into selfie mode. So that's it for buttons and controls, although notice this red unlock button too. Pressing this unlocks the handle and allows it to swing backwards, while a lever on the side can be used to tighten the gimbal into its open position. Inside we find a ribbon cable to make sure we take care of, along with another metal quarter inch 20 thread. Again, not apparent what this would be used for just yet, but all will be revealed as we begin using the device. Moving on, finishing off the handle is a single USB-C port and status LED used to charge the built-in 3400 milliamp battery, where impressively a full charge will provide around 20 hours of usage, so easily enough to get you through an entire day's shooting. And if that weren't enough, Moser managed to squeeze in two cold shoe mounting points too, one on either side, perfect for attaching not only microphones or video lights, but also extension arms for an external monitor for instance. Anyways, moving up, we have the main three axis gimbal design with the three arms compensating for movement across the three axes. All arms are in their locked state for safe and secure storage, although they're easily unlocked with a quick twist of the small red levers, one found by each motor. Talking of motors, these are rather substantial, yet have been improved so that they consume less power when not under load and therefore last much longer for that all day shooting. On the opposite side of each motor we find a lever that can be unlocked in order to release the adjustability built into each motor arm, used for sliding the arms up and down, with handy guides printed on each, for balancing your camera once in place. Talking of cameras, your mirrorless or DSLR camera sits on this plate, which again can be released and is fully adjustable too. A final point to note are the small cluster of ports situated conveniently beside the attached camera, namely two USB-C and a mini HDMI. These can be used for communication with third-party accessories or even Moses' own intelligent brick, which allows gesture control while shooting solo for instance, all conveniently located right next to the camera itself. Nevertheless, you will require a certain degree of setup time to get the camera in place and ready to shoot. An ARCA plate is supplied and can be used to mount to the bottom of your chosen camera system before sliding into place into the gimbal bracket itself so it's nestled up next to the tilt motor and locking into place with the side lever, which keeps the camera very securely in place. 
From here, it's a matter of balancing each of the axes as much as possible in order to reduce any unnecessary stress on the motors. I'd recommend locking each axis to begin with and unlock as you move down to balance each. So starting with the tilt axis and with the camera facing upwards, release the locking lever and begin adjusting the arm so that upon releasing the camera, the lens remains pointing upwards before locking the lever back into place. With the camera now horizontal, we repeat the balancing process, although this time by moving the camera plate back and forwards on its mounting bracket before locking into place. So at this point, the tilt axis is completely balanced. You can see from my example here, no matter where I point the camera on the tilt axis, it stays put, so completely balanced. Repeat the same process with both remaining axes following the same procedure of unlocking the lever, balancing by sliding the arm back and forth, and then locking back into place. And after a few minutes, you're completely balanced and almost ready to shoot. Note that once balanced, the system does have a quick vertical mode. By that I mean the camera, along with its plate and mounting bracket, can easily slide off its arm and slide down in a vertical orientation instead. Quick and easy. Perfect for vertical portrait mode shooting. In my particular package, I also have a remote focus control system. In essence, we have a plastic ring that attaches to the focus ring of the camera lens and a focus pulling system that then attaches to the installed ring with all mounting hardware being included in the package, of course. This would then allow the operator full remote control of the camera's focus via the included remote unit, which does incorporate a cold shoe mount for attachment to the gimbal itself if you prefer. So you could, for example, have a monitor attached to one side with a monitor arm and the remote focus on the other. Maybe something we'll revisit in a future video, but a great solution providing a truly professional level setup. Nevertheless, with the physical setup complete, we're ready to power the unit up by pressing on the power button for three seconds. The rear display screen springs to life, as do the motors, now stabilizing the camera across all three axes. The front panel is minimalist, and all the controls are easily accessible with one hand. The 2x4cm mono LCD is relatively bright and provides all the data you need to operate and configure the gimbal. Other than the small size, there's no real issues here, allowing easy adjustments to gimbal speed, highlighting the current active mode, and providing some general gimbal control. While navigating around menus is relatively intuitive, when attaching any camera to the system, the first thing you'll want to do is head across to the auto-tune menu to begin the tuning process. In essence, while it looks like the gimbal is going crazy, this tunes each motor to the weight of the camera equipment, ensuring they are not stressing themselves and using extra battery power unnecessarily. The entire process takes just a few seconds, after which you're ready to shoot. If you do find the screen a little too small for your liking, fortunately we do have the Moza Master Remote app for controlling all aspects of the gimbal too. The connection process is quick and easy, no real issues there, and once connected I did find it was rather reliable too, allowing full remote gimbal control by way of an on-screen joypad, which works perfectly well, as well as access to all the configurational options and settings we had on the gimbal itself, all rather intuitive and easy to use. A nice feature is the ability to move your smartphone in space and the gimbal will follow all the same movements in unison, although I did find it to be a bit of a gimmick and not really reliable enough for main video capture. Nevertheless, one of the strongest points of the Aircross 3 is the sheer versatility in transforming the unit for different shooting modes. While the Axis arms are rather big in order to fit larger cameras, the hand grip is rather short and you'll find yourself tired during longer recording sessions, so I'd recommend always keeping the included tripod mount into the bottom. It makes for a much more comfortable hold since you can now use two hands to grip the system, perfect for longer shooting sessions. This configuration is reminiscent of the classic one-handed gimbal design. Of course, we have all the normal gimbal modes available too, locking and unlocking different axes depending upon how you wish to shoot. This also includes an FPV mode, keeping all axes following the camera but smoothing out the footage, as well as an inception mode for those 360 rotations that always seem to make me dizzy, while the thumbstick can be used for finer gimbal control too, all working wonderfully well. Should you get in a muddle, a quick double tap of the front mounted trigger button will reset and recenter the gimbal, while a triple tap flips the camera around into selfie mode, a double tap again to reset, while pressing and holding will keep all axes locked, which comes in very handy while shooting. Modes aside, we can change the physical setup of the gimbal system too, thanks to the split handle design we touched on earlier. 
So by unlocking the handle and swinging it open before locking into place, we can remove the tripod attachment from the bottom and now mount it to the angled thread we again touched on earlier. And with it securely in place, we have instantly changed the physical setup. This configuration allows you to use the gimbal in an underslung capacity, allowing you to get low shots of your subject. And to take things a step further, by opening the handle, we reveal yet another metal thread for attachment of a second mini tripod. Unfortunately, I didn't have a second tripod included in the package though, so I'm using a third party unit here, but it's enough to give you a general idea of the possibilities and for me, enough to get the job done. This configuration is for filmmakers who prefer to use a single vertical handle with one hand and a horizontal handle with the other, allowing greater control for those cinematic movements and seamless transitions from a low underslung mode to a higher shooting position with a single smooth sweep, by far my personal favourite configuration. Finally, for those who have Moser's Slypod, a motorised monopod slider, the Aircross 3 can be used seamlessly with the Slypod in order to create a portable, fully featured slider too, something we'll cover in a future video. While the split handle design works really well, the only downside to note is that it makes gimbal control via the buttons and screen almost impossible. The gimbal arm just gets in the way, so you can't actually reach the buttons at all. As a result, these configurations are best used when you have all your settings dialed in and have some external control instead. The versatility really is exceptional here though and the design works really well. Transitions between setups is easy on the fly too, it all works perfectly well. And that shows when using the device to capture smooth motion too. When it comes to general performance, as we would expect nowadays, everything worked perfectly. Like other handheld stabilizers, it can't do much about the up and down motion as you walk or run, so you really do need to adjust your walking and shooting style too, with softer steps for instance, but it still manages to iron out a lot of movement to give really smooth footage. With those added shooting modes, you can really pull off some impressive shots, and to be fair, I found the unit to be incredibly smooth in operation overall, especially in the underslung mode, with the ability to transition between shooting heights with the utmost of ease. A real joy to use. And bear in mind, I'm simply testing the smoothness of the gimbal here. I can see how this could be used in a more professional level with added attachments, remote operation and so on. It just feels more premium over other gimbals I've tested in the past. So where does the Aircross 3 fit in? It mostly comes down to the ergonomics and the design of the gimbal. While it certainly has all the latest features, it's the multiple setups that make this tool stand out, meaning quick transformations adapted for multiple shooting positions depending upon your shooting scenario and environment. In addition to perfectly smooth 3-axis stabilisation, the Aircross 3 will connect to a range of professional cameras and allow varying degrees of control, from starting and stopping recording, to remote focus and zoom control, even gesture control with additional accessories. Being the size of an A4 piece of paper when folded down, its impressively compact size means it will fit easily into your camera bag, travel bag or even your daily backpack. Wrap all that up together and include the various other features I've just not had time to cover in this review, and at this price point, the Aircross 3 is a solid choice. <laughs>